But there is one topic that I've had a few messages and comments about. You put in a, a tick based on how you felt about the study on that day. The link is down below for you to download for free. Welcome back. My name is Rowena. I am a nursing student from Sydney, Australia. And if you don't know who I am, I basically make nursing videos and um, just kind of show you what it's like to be a nursing student, what I get up to, and hopefully kind of give an insight into what it's like in case you're looking at getting into nursing as well. A lot of my videos are usually vlogs and things like that, but I have uploaded some videos in the past that go through how I study and how I take notes and that sort of stuff. If you're interested in any of those, I will put some cards up the top and leave some links down below so you can have a look at them as well. But there is one topic that I've had a few messages and comments about um, asking for some more insight into how I do it, and that's how I do my retrospective study guides. If you're unfamiliar what a retrospective study guide is, I will put some further links down below to have a look and go into more depth about what's actually involved and the science behind it and that sort of thing. But essentially a retrospective study guide is basically flipping a study guide on its head rather than putting in what you want to study, like what topics you want to study at future dates, like arbitrary future dates. It actually has the ability to make you look at the exams um, and the topics that you're having to study, looking at how easy you find some, how hard you find other topics, and then basically you can record what study you've done throughout the weeks leading up to the exam so that you, I think it's like a more effective way of studying. I find that I actually cover all of the topics a lot better before the exam, a lot more thoroughly, and I am able to keep track of how I'm feeling about the topics, whether I actually understand them or not. And it means that rather than just studying a topic, even though I know it fairly well, but I've told myself that's what I have to study that day, it means that I can actually look at the topics that I'm struggling with the most and, and make sure that I'm fully up to date with those. So yeah, if you're interested in learning more about what a retrospective study guide is in the first place, then um, look at the links down below and definitely look at Ali Abdal's channel. He does a lot of stuff about effective studying um, and I'll, I'll leave some other pages and, and channels down below so you can have a look. But. What I'd like to also announce is that for this retrospective study guide, I've actually created a free template. So you can actually go down and click the link below to download the free template. You can have a look and follow along with me while I'm showing you what it's like and, and how you add your own topics in and, and how you actually use the Google Sheet document. But yeah, so that's for free for you. You don't have to pay for anything and you can adapt it how you want to so that you have a perfect study guide for your course or your subject or whatever you're studying for. Also, this is purely just on Google Sheets at the moment. You can't download it for like an Excel spreadsheet on your own computer software. You would have to access it through Google Sheets online. It, Google Sheets is free to use, so um, if you don't have a Google account, you can create one pretty easily and access the Google document. All right, so I'm gonna show you my computer screen now and we can get started. So you'll see this link in the description box down below and you can just click that one and it'll upload the screen that'll let you um, basically download the template into your Google Documents files. So this is what it will come up like. In the top right corner, you've got the blue use template box in there. So all you have to do is just click and it will then copy it straight to your Google Documents. Okay, so the first thing you'll notice is that there are lots of boxes in here. Um, I've also made it so that you can scroll down without losing the dates that you can enter in and you can also scroll across without losing the topics. So you can always see the topics and the dates that you're up to. I have also included a whole bunch of notes in here for you to have a look at and it kind of gives you a bit of an overview and a guide of how to use the template. So the first thing I would suggest doing is to re-enter the name of the course that you're studying for and just put it up in this box here. You can also put in the date of the exam that you're studying for and any exam information. So things like um, how many sections there are, if it's multiple choice or short answer. You can also put in what lecture series they're covering, that sort of thing. Any information that you find would be helpful to have on the template itself. Even things like where the exam's located, how long it's gonna take you to get there, that kind of stuff. Like you can just pop that in the exam information box there. Moving along, you will see that we also have these color codes. At the top here, these color codes are basically what you see in the columns here if there's a day that you want to block out for whatever reason. 
So for example, the final exam date, which is down the end here, that's in red, but other things like a non-study day. So for example, if you wanna have one day off a week where you want to have a break from study, you can put that in here and I've put that in purple. You can change the color if you want to. Also things like work, if you're also working during the exam period or in the semester and you want to section off the days that you're working because you just feel like you won't be able to study on those days or if you just want to keep an eye on it to show that maybe you couldn't get as much work done on those study days um, because you were also working i like to put that in an, in a different color as well so that's why i have yellow here also you have the weekends in gray so you can kind of keep track of what the weeks are, are looking like and also you have these three colors here which i will go into more depth about in a second. So the premise of the study guide is to basically showcase every single day that you have leading up to the exam and you put in a, a tick based on how you felt about the study on that day. So for example, if I went to topic one and there was a subtopic that I wanted to look at on that day and I thought that it was very difficult, I could copy the red tick and put it in the day and corresponding to the subtopic that I studied just to tell me that I really struggled with that. I had no idea what was going on and I know that I need to go back and study it again. Based on that information, when I look at the study guide in say a couple of days time and trying to figure out what I want to study, I can see, oh, I really struggled with this subtopic one and two. And I think that it's really worth me trying to get on top of that now. So I'll go and have a look at that again. And I go and study it again that day. And perhaps I was a little bit better at it that day. So I can take one of the orange ticks and say, yeah, I think that was a lot better. And just with a little bit more work, I'll feel a lot better about it. So I'm going to pop that in on the day that I did that. Ultimately, you want to basically get a green tick in every topic that you're studying for the exam before the final exam comes up. That's kind of the aim of what the study guide is about. Once you get the green tick, it's not to say that you shouldn't stop studying that topic, but it means that if there are other topics that don't have a green tick in them and you've still got days before the exam, it's worth studying those other topics first before going back and looking at the other topics you've already had a green tick in. So yeah, that's kind of how it works. I've also just put some tips over here as well so that you can have a look at just how the guide works and how you should kind of um, utilize the guide as a resource for studying. So the first thing would be to create a new retrospective study guide template for each of the courses that you have um, for that semester or if you have multiple exams coming up, you wanna have a different page set up for each of those exams basically. When you're creating each of the new sections um, or guides for each of the different courses, what I would recommend is actually creating a new sheet at the bottom of the document. So the way that I would su suggest doing that is to go back down to the um, uh, tab for the sheet that you're in at the moment and just click the little arrow at the bottom and then click duplicate. And that creates a copy of that page basically. And you can toggle between the different templates um, and you can create different ones for different courses that you're doing and different exams that are coming up. Again, in the tips, as I said, the goal is to get a green tick for every topic row in the final exam. Keep in mind down here for each of the topics, you might not want to do it like I have, but I've had, I've split it up so that I've got a main topic. So for example, if I was studying cardiology for subtopics, for example, I wanted to look at the um, pathophysiology of a specific disease and then I split it up into different diseases like that, something like that. You don't have to do it like that. You could just do topics without any subtopics, but it's up to you. You can use it how you want to. Another tip is to try not to leave more than two days between studying on any of the topics in that exam guide. And that's just a rule that I have for myself. If I've had two days off from any kind of study, I like to make sure that it's like a rule for myself that I have to study at least something on that third day if I haven't studied for the past two days. So that's just a rule for myself. You don't have to use it, but it's a tip that I like to add in there as well. My fourth tip, which I think is a really key one is when you don't know what to study, look for the topic you are struggling with the most and then study that one. That's like the premise of this whole retrospective study guide. And I think Ali Abdal has said this in a video previously and he likes to ask this question, which is, if the exam was tomorrow, what topic would you struggle with the most? So yeah, I think that's something to keep in mind when you're looking at this guide. Definitely have a look at the ones that you're struggling with and make sure you spend the time early on with those topics so that you can feel like you're on top of 
all of the topics that are coming up in the exam rather than just the select few that you like studying because you find them really easy. And then my fifth and sixth and seventh tips are just about like some rules about when to study based on what color you found the last study session. So if a topic is flagged red, you want to study it between or within two to four days. If you have a topic that is flagged as orange, you want to study it again um, in less than seven to 10 days. And if a topic is flagged green, you want to study it within um, or less than 14 to 21 days. Or if you don't have that amount of time before the final exam, maybe just have a look through it again the day before the final exam, just so that you are fully aware of what you covered basically. Some of the other notes in here are just things like you want to put the final date of the final exam at the last column basically, or in the last week that you have on the guide. There is also a little note here about how to copy and paste the weeks into the guide in case you want to add more weeks in between now and the final exam. So for example, I will show you how I do that. So what you do is select all of the week, the cells in the week. So that's seven columns here. So I've just selected all of those, copy that one, and then you right click onto it and you hover over insert cells and then you click shift right, and that just shifts it over. Once you've shifted it over, just click paste, and it pastes another week in there. So that's how you add another week in, and it just shifts it over a little bit. But yeah, all of that information is here, so you can basically copy, or like follow those instructions, and it'll tell you what to do. I've also got some instructions for how to add another topic. I'll show you how to do that as well. So for example, I, a sixth topic with a couple of subtopics in there as well. So what I might do is the first step is to click the row number on the left. So it's this one here. Um, you can click two as well if you hold shift down and click both. When you've hi like highlighted both of those rows, just right click and insert two above. And then to reformat it, because obviously this is missing like the topic. For example, you can just copy topic five copy it across, rename it to whatever topic you had in there, um, and you can copy the subtopics as well. The last thing I want to show you is just this note section at the bottom. So for example, if you have a day that's highlighted as a study day or a work day or a non-study day and a work day, sorry, then you can just add a note about what that day entails. So for example, if you have a day of work, you can write work day and you can say like how many hours you're working so that you have an idea of how much study time you have left in the day if you're still wanting to study that day. For example, as well, some of my courses, I had practical assessments that were a couple of weeks before the final exam so I would add like a, a day off in there to say that I'm not studying that day. That's my assessment. And then I'm just going to go home and relax and that's it. So that's how I use the retrospective study guide template. And I hope you enjoy using this one and the free download. And yeah, I'm really happy that I was able to make something that I can share with other people as well. I think that's just such a nice thing to be able to share the tips and things that I use and hopefully they'll help you as well. If there's anything that I've missed in the guide or in this video, it's Itself, then please leave me a comment down below and let me know because I would love to find out if there's anything that I have missed so that I can update it in the future and share um, the updated template with everyone that's wanting to download it. Again, if you want to learn more about retrospective study guides, then um, have a look at the links and things in the description box down below that I will put in there and you can learn more about the science behind them and how they work and why they're effective and things like that. If you do it a different way as well, I would love to hear from you. Leave me a comment down below and let me know what you do when you're studying, how you set up your study guides, and if you feel like this particular type of studying might not be the best for you. I'd love to hear back from you as well, because I think everyone is very different in the way that they study, and I'd love to learn more about um, other people's techniques as well. I think it's really interesting. But on that note, please enjoy the template. Uh, again, the link is down below for you to download for free. If you like this video, then please give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more from me and my channel and all things nursing school related, then click the subscribe button down below. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.